For those who have seen Rick Ness on Gold Rush, you know he's no stranger to striking gold. Although he didn't start out as a miner, he was a broke musician with no clue how to find gold. But somehow, he's now one of the richest faces on Gold Rush. But just how much has the rugged miner really pocketed from all his hard work? Well, there's a lot more to his fortune than meets the eye, and some of the numbers might shock you. Rick Ness's rise to fame isn't some cliché story. In fact, before he was digging for gold on Discovery Channel's Gold Rush, he was a musician, playing in a band called the .357 String Band. When Gold Rush initially premiered in 2010, Rick wasn't even on the show. He came in later, but his entrance was memorable because, unlike others, Rick wasn't a miner. Actually, he had no mining experience whatsoever. What he did have was drive and an open mind, and sometimes that is all you need to break into something completely new. This dude was tough, wasn't afraid to work hard, and was ready to prove himself. No wonder his story will be one of the most interesting stories on the show. Now, if you thought Rick got a job and a fortune handed to him on a silver platter, you must be sadly mistaken. He had to work his way literally digging through dirt and stone in search of those shiny gold nuggets that would change his life forever. Now, let's hear about his transformation. You never know where life will take you. If there is someone who can justify this saying, then that would be Rick Ness. When Rick was in his younger days, his career was all related to music. He plays bass in a bluegrass punk band. He traveled the country nonstop, lived out of a suitcase, and played shows wherever they could. He loves music. But as any person who has ever tried to make it knows, it's just tough. The year 2012 happened to be a big turning point in his life. During one of his comedy shows in Alaska, Rick met Parker Schnabel, one of the stars in The Gold Rush. They hit it off straight away, and Schnabel saw something in Rick worth the risk. Always up for an adventure, Rick, with zero experience as a miner, accepted Parker's offer to join his mining crew on Gold Rush. It doesn't get much more illogical than a musician to miner Rick himself, even admitted he didn't know if he could do it, but sometimes you gotta just take the jump. That's exactly what Rick did. He traded in his bass guitar for bulldozers and excavators and plunged headlong into the rough and tumble world of gold mining. Mining is not for the faint of heart. And it wouldn't take Rick long to find out just how massively physically and mentally exhausting the operation was. What he lacked in experience, he made up for in grit and determination. Rick had something to prove to the world, sure, but more importantly, to himself. This was the first step Rick would make into the world of gold mining and the beginning of his eventual rise to riches. Mining in the Klondike is brutal. Extreme weather, high stakes, and punishing terrain combine to make this one of the harshest places on Earth to try to eke out a living. It's not just dirt mining, it's surviving. In his first few days, he quickly realized mining wasn't as easy as operating heavy machinery and pulling the gold out of the ground. It was an all-consuming fight against time and nature. The Klondike isn't just cold, it's downright brutal. Temperatures can drop down to life-threatening levels, equipment always breaks down, and the clock is ticking. Each lost day means tens of thousands of dollars lost, and in gold mining, really, time is money. Rick's job under Parker Schnabel was far from being a glamorous one. He had to learn firstly how to operate an excavator, how to keep dirt piles, and all the related skills of extracting gold. The work was hard, but he never shied away from hard labor. He embraced it. Additionally, Rick had to learn how to work with a team under stressful conditions, which was not that easy. In a place where mistakes cost a fortune, the pressure was at an all-time high. One of the big lessons Rick learned was the patience game of gold mining. You can be out in the dirt piles for days, literally weeks, and find absolutely nothing. But then when you did hit, that rush, the moment you realized you had struck it big, made all the struggle worthwhile. As Rick himself has said, You've got to have thick skin and a lot of persistence because nothing worth having comes easy. Through those early years, Rick developed his skills, built his confidence, and began to dream of what life would be like if he wasn't just part of the crew, but the one giving the orders. Little did he know, the opportunity that would make that dream possible was nearer than he thought. It's a point in every underdog story, the moment when the hero needs to break away from the mentor into the unknown. 
In the case of Rick, that came with season nine of Gold Rush when he made the bold call to leave Parker Schnabel's crew and go out on his own mining. That was a huge risk, and honestly, many people thought he was crazy. Stepping out in the mining world on your own is a little like jumping from an airplane without a parachute. You might land, but most of the time you are going to crash and burn. Parker had been Rick's mentor for years, teaching him the ways, since mining for someone else is one thing, and running your own operation is a completely different beast. But his decision to fly solo put everything on the line, from mining skills to personal and financial risks. Financially, he had to bankroll the operation himself, meaning that every breakdown, every setback, and every failure would be coming directly out of his pocket. Mentally, the pressure would be huge. As he himself admitted, when you're the boss, every mistake is yours to own. There's no one else to blame. Suspense mounted as viewers watched him prepare for his first season as a mining boss. Would he find gold or would he go broke trying? Everything was against him. Going solo meant finding new land to mine, securing the right crew, and dealing with the logistic nightmares that came along with setting up a mining operation from scratch. Added to this was the fact that he had to carry all of this out under the most extreme conditions of the Klondike. The undeterred Rick had been one of those people who always took risks in life, and this was the biggest gamble. I'm betting on myself, he told him. And as audience members, we couldn't quite help but pull for him. The stakes were as high as they get, and he was diving headfirst into uncharted territory. Did his bet pay off? Rick's first year as a mining boss was just up and down. On one hand, he was given free reign to make his own decisions. No more taking orders, no more answering to someone else. However, on the other hand, with great power comes great responsibility. In the world of gold mining, that comes with a price. But perhaps Rick's biggest challenge was his crew. He wasn't just a boss, he was a leader, and leading in the high-pressure environment of the Klondike isn't easy. Tempers flared, stress levels were through the roof, and when things went wrong, which they often did, it fell to Rick to fix. Equipment broke down regularly, and every minute of downtime meant lost revenue due to unstable weather. But if that wasn't enough, the pressure to find the gold was always there with Rick. As someone said in the mining circles, if you don't find gold, you don't eat. Every day without a discovery felt like a ticking time bomb. The suspense was palpable, not just for Rick, but also for the viewers. He found enough gold to keep his operation running, but waited for the question of whether his dream of mining boss status would crumble. But here's where his resilience shined through. Despite the setbacks, he kept pushing forward. I'm not a quitter, he said in an interview, and I've never been one to back down from a challenge. That mindset kept him going through the toughest days of the season. And then it happened. After weeks of digging dirt and through obstacle after obstacle, Rick and his crew struck gold. The moment was electric. You could see it on Rick's face relief, joy. A huge risk and it was starting to pay off. When he finally hit gold, it became vindication for all he'd been working toward. Immense pressure, never-ending challenges, with odds always against him. But he had done it. He had left his mark as a mining boss. That was the moment when, finally as an independent operator, Rick made his first real significant gold haul. At that point in mining and life, the months of backbreaking labor, financial risks, and personal sacrifices finally began to pay off. The crew rejoiced, and the audience at home was in on the triumph. It was one of those rare, feel-good moments that reality TV sometimes serves up in its most pure form. But while the discovery of gold was exciting, it was a cold, hard reminder of just how tough this business really is. Finding the gold is only half the equation. It's keeping the operation up and running, keeping the finances worked out, and making sure there's enough gold on hand to cover all your costs. That's the constant battle. Rick was the first to admit that his first season as a boss was only just the beginning. What he did find was good enough to keep him going, but by no means a jackpot. Such persistence paid off handsomely in his story. He had every reason in the world to quit during that first season. Equipment breakdowns, weather disasters, and financial strain all bit into his operation. Yet he refused to back down. Instead, he doubled down. 
There were days when I thought about walking away, he later confessed in an interview. But I'm too stubborn for that. I knew we'd find gold. It was just a matter of time. Of course, gold mining helped Rick build up his fortune. But that was not all that filled his bank accounts. Let's not forget he's a reality TV star. And that does help when lining one's pocket. Actually, most of his appearances on this show constitute some of the most important reasons for his rise to being rich. When a reality show like Gold Rush has run for more than a couple of years, participants are sure to get more than exposure to an audience but some well-deserved cold, hard cash. Rick's paycheck was a fat amount of money besides the check reaching through the mail. Besides seeing one's face on national television, there comes a lot of fame and recognition opening ways to other revenue streams and sponsorship deals, public appearances, and merchandise selling. This further presented Rick with the chance to build a personal brand out of the gold rush. Being laid back, together with work determination, he was a pretty popular man amongst the fans. A person with such a reputation opens himself up to worthwhile opportunities that would be away from mining. With time, Rick has collaborated with different brands and companies that resonate with his persona, therefore adding to his income. The show has become huge. The success of Gold Rush is one of the highly rated series on the Discovery Channel that grosses millions upon millions every week. That kind of exposure doesn't just trickle down to the network, it does to the cast. The more popular the show gets, the more valued its stars are. And Rick isn't an exception. Added to the amount of gold that he has been able to retrieve, returns from the show give Rick a fairly decent financial base, but he is not one to rest on his oars. Gold mining is unpredictable, Rick has said. One season you could strike it big and the next, you could lose everything. And for this reason, he has diversified his sources of income. The money from reality TV is good for the time being, but Rick knows where the serious money is, in mining. For each season, Rick has struck it big on Gold Rush. There's another side to the story that does not make it in front of the cameras. The constant stress, financial pressure, and physical and mental tolls it takes on him. As a matter of fact, in one interview he said, People don't realize how tough this job is until you're living it. There are days when you're out there, you're working 18-hour days, it's freezing cold, equipment's breaking down, and you just want to quit. Mining is a very exhaustive occupation, and under the harsh Klondike conditions, it will be even more merciless. There's also the stress of having to pay the bills. Everything costs money, and every broken piece of machinery means another dollar out of his pocket. The hardest part is knowing that if you don't find gold, you're still paying the bills, Rick said. It's a lot of pressure. Add to this the psychological demand of having to be separated from family and friends for months on end having to work under isolation, and with the high-level risk that came with mining for gold, getting to one's head. Rick has been candid with the trials he has gone through in this respect, and has expressed quite specifically that it is just not easy to keep smiling in such a high-pressure environment. But despite all these challenges, he continues to push forward. I've never been one to shy away from hard work, he said. If you're not willing to get your hands dirty and face the obstacles head on, you're not going to make it in this business. After years of hard work both on and off the screen, it finally has literally paid off for Rick. Today, his net worth is estimated at $3 million. Far from the days when he was just a musician, barely making ends meet and literally living life on the wheels, most of his fortune comes from being successful as a gold miner. Of course, not every season has been a massive success. In the world of gold mining, there are good years and bad years, but Rick has managed to stay afloat, able even in the tough times to turn a steady profit. Add to that the income he made from his appearance in the gold rush. Being one of the main protagonists in the show, Rick receives a pretty decent salary for every season he has appeared in the series. Though exact numbers are not made public, it is estimated that Rick earns upwards of $100,000 to $200,000 for each season. And that does not account for any bonuses or extra incentives offered according to the show's ratings and overall performance. Not to speak of his mining income and his salary for participating in a TV show, he has not been blind to diversifying the streams of income. 
managing to gain sponsorships, brand collaborations, and public appearances on account of his fame. However, Rick is not the type of fella to brag about his fortune. As a matter of fact, he is so quick to remind anyone that gold mining is quite capricious. I could be worth millions today, but one bad season could change everything, he said in an interview. And that is why Rick keeps his nose to the grind. But the big question is this, what's next? Standing at the pinnacle of his mining career, the question is simple. Seasons of success and struggle, Rick has never been one to turn his back on a challenge. He's always on the lookout for the next big thing, whether it entails furthering his mining operation, taking on new projects, or exploring different ways to diversify an income. More recently, he has hinted that he wants to try his hand at something new, perhaps leaving the world of mining behind entirely, or at least finding ways to supplement his mining career with other ventures. The one thing that appears to be floating around, if not an outright expectation, is an extension of Rick's role in the world of television. After all, he has already proven a fan favorite in Gold Rush, and given his affable nature into which the down-to-earth kind of charm fits, it wouldn't be hard to envision him making his way into other routes in media. Be it hosting a spin-off show or diving into documentary work, Rick has the kind of personality that draws people in. He's relatable, and in a world where authenticity is everything, well, that's a pretty valuable trait. Rick has never pursued fame for its own sake. I didn't get into mining to be a TV star, Rick has said. I got into it because I love the work. The show just happened to be part of the deal. Thus, while Hollywood may retain a strong appeal, Rick's first love will always be mining. The other direction Rick can take is further expansion of his operation. He has learned much about the business side of mining over the last few seasons, and it is always open to him to make new claims or invest in other mines. The gold mining industry is quite huge, and for someone with Rick's experience, the opportunities are just endless. The point is, he's already proven that he has the right stuff to run a successful mining operation, and with the right partners, well, who knows how far he could go. There is always a chance Rick might just walk away from mining. After all those years of hard work, backbreaking labor, and constant tension from running a gold mine, not one would stop him if he decided to hang his hard hat in and go on to pursue something else. But for now, Rick isn't ready to quit. Still chasing that next big gold strike, still hungry for the thrill of discovery. There's always more gold out there, Rick grinned. And as long as there is gold, I'm going to keep digging. The next chapter of his career will head down whatever path he chooses. But one thing is for certain, for Gold Rush fans, the adventure is anything but over.